This is a master, as you can see in the title already, with two legs. There is an actuarial and a financial leg, let's say. The actuarial part is insurance related. The financial part is financial related. And of course, these are not, not two separate worlds, but there is an intersection. Uh, and the master is all about these things. Uh, it's a joint master, in fact, organized by the Faculty of Economics and Business and the Faculty of Sciences. So you will have courses from uh, professors, uh, teachers from uh, different faculties. Um, I'll try to, yes. So the over, what will we see, uh, see? What is your profile and what your interest or what should be your profile and what should be your interests to be uh, to follow this master? A little bit about the program structure why in general you should choose to study at the Faculty of Economics and Business in our university, something about the admission requirements, and we will also uh, talk a little bit about uh, career perspectives if you have followed this course. Here is an overview. Um, I think once you follow this um, session, you are already in the explore part. You know what in which you are interested and you might be interested in actuarial and financial uh, studies. So that's why you are here now. You followed an undergrad graduate program. Yes, I uh, hope so. And then um, it should be with a sufficiently strong background in mathematics and statistics and with basic knowledge of economics, your background. If your uh, background in economics is uh, not existing, that's not a problem. We have a preparatory program for that, we have some courses for that. Here we have an overview of, in fact, all masters that you can follow um, in our faculty, but we are here in the engineering for business part. Your profile, as we said, you have an academic degree with a strong background in mathematics and statistics and a basic knowledge of economics. And then you can enter our master of actuarial and financial engineering under certain conditions which is, and this is a two-year full-time uh, program. What should be your interests? You, you must be interested in applying tools and models from mathematics and statistics to real-world economic and financial problems. We focus enough on the mathematical and statistics background because in the end, this is an, a quantitative uh, master, so mathematical and statistical knowledge is very uh, important, not at the most abstract level, but at least as an applied level. Um, we, you should be interested also in data science and analytics, statistics in general, let's say, and how these tools are used in practice, in particular in an insurance and uh, finance context. Your profile that we expect is again, you have a solid background, a sufficient background in mathematics, probability theory, and statistics, and you have basic knowledge in economics and ICT. In case of a lack of this knowledge in economics, as I mentioned already, there is the preparatory program uh, where we can help you to um, get this um, skill. Let us have a look at the program structure of our master. Well, there are, it's um, expressed here on the left hand side with blocks. There is the red block. The red block consists of the fundamental courses, the compulsory courses. Let's say the courses that you have to follow. This is 70 to 72 ECTS, depending on the courses that you choose. Some courses have five, others have six uh, ECTS. And this fundamental course work is in fact split in if or is organized along five topics and the five topics uh, are oh sorry um here the five topics are mentioned here there is actuarial engineering on life health and pensions this is all about insurances related to health life uh, or the payments are dependent on life health risks like um classical uh, pension annuity or like uh, hospitalization insurance. There is a second component then actuarial engineering data science methods. This is um, more um, statistics, mainly related to non-life and non-life doesn't mean here that in this case, but non-life in, in our context means risks that have, have nothing to do with life, but have to do with 
for instance, automobile insurance, with fire insurance, with earthquake insurance. Then there is a, a third component on risk engineering. Risk engineering where, uh, in fact, that's about quantitative risk management. You have different kinds of risks in an insurance company, in a, in a financial environment. How do you manage this risk? How do you add these risks and so on? That's risk engineering. Then there is also a part on financial engineering. Financial engineering is more the op option pricing, asset liability uh, management, and all these kind of issues, which are of, of course also in an in insurance context very relevant. These four parts are the more quantitative parts, but then there is also a uh, fundamental part on regulation, which consists of 10 to 12 ECTS. Why is that? Because you apply your mathematics in a context in insurance and finance, and this world, insurance and finance world, is heavily regulated. Uh, it sounds a little bit old fashioned. Why is the regulation uh, necessary? But in an insurance and financial context, context, probably it's very important, mainly to protect the consumer. So the regulation is in fact all about how can we be sure that the insurer who takes our premiums invest them in a good way so that when a claim is due, when, for instance, I have a car accident or when I uh, die, there is a sufficient amount to be paid. There is a whole regulation on that and you will study that in this part. This is the fundamental course part, so what everyone has to follow. Then there is a master thesis. These are the green uh, squares, let's say, which is in fact also a relatively fundamental pack, uh, part of the course of the whole program, sorry. And then there is the electives um, coursework, um, 24 to 26 ECTS, where you have more freedom to choose. This elective coursework is organized again along the same five topics. So you have courses in any of these five topics in addition to the ones that are compulsory. Some of these courses are more business oriented, others are more uh, research oriented, depending uh, on your choice, on your uh, preference. Then, um, important to mention here also that of this elective course work, uh, 10 ECTS have to be followed outside Kai Leuven uh, at the Université Catholique de Louvain or Université Libre de Bruxelles. So, the two, the, let's say, our two partner universities who are also offering actuarial education in Belgium. So the program is set in such a way that this is uh, relatively easy done. Uh, it's not that you will have a course until 10 at uh, ULB and that five minutes later in Leuven starts our course. So we take this more or less into account. In the course, in the elective course work, there is also an internship that you can do or a summer school, follow a summer school or a project in collaboration with the research center LRISC. You don't have to do the internship, but we strongly advise you to do that. Some students prefer not to do an internship, but instead uh, follow an additional course that, that's uh, also possible. Okay, this is more or less how the program is structured. The, the compulsory part is a relatively extensive part. The reason for that is that, as I will tell later, it is possible to become member of the Institute of Actuaries in Belgium and member of the International Actuarial Association, and they have a syllabus of courses that has to be have to be followed in order to become a member. We make our program such that if you choose the right uh, path, let's say that you will be able that you will uh, have uh, satisfied 95% of the requirements of that Institute of Actuaries in Belgium, and that's also part where there why there is a fundamental a, a large compulsory part, let's say. Preparatory programs, a little bit about that. So we are here in the uh, in this column. The academic, if you have an academic degree in a, a field different from economics of business, then we look here. There is a preparatory program leading to the master of financial and actuarial, actuarial and financial engineering. Sorry. In fact, this is only one course. Principle of econo principles of economics for scientists that you have to follow 
typical example, you have a bachelor in mathematics, but you didn't study any economics course, then we will ask you to follow additionally this course. The good thing is you, it looks preparatory means like before, but you don't have to follow that before you can enter. You can follow this course simultaneously with the two year program. Suppose that you have studied mathematics, but you followed already some course on economics in your bachelor degree, then uh, it, it may be not necessary to follow this additional course. That depends on uh, a case by case that we have a look at your situation. Why should you choose to study at the Faculty of Economics and Business in Kai Leuven? The easy answer is because the best university in the world, but let's be a little bit more um, in detail about this. First of all, our programs are practic practice oriented. We are not purely theoretical, uh, offering purely theoretical masters. In, in our case, the Master of Actuarial and Financial Engineering, if you follow the right path, immediately leads to the profession of actuary, an, an, an actuary member of the, in, uh, of the actuarial institute. Okay. So there are internships possible built in in our program, as I mentioned. There are guest lectures very often. Part of our courses are taught by people from practice. Part of the life insurance course is taught by someone, an actuary from practice. Part of the pension mathematics course, for instance, is uh, sorry, the, the full uh, pension mathematics course is taught by someone uh, from practice. So we, we put a lot of attention to the that it is practice oriented. It is also student oriented. Um, I would say here that I think we are well known or our, uh, uh, let me say it in another way, our students evaluate us usually very positive in the in the relation student professor relationship. We have a fluent, fluent uh, relation in that respect. I think my colleagues and me, we are uh, very accessible for the students uh, the ambassador later can agree or disagree with me, but uh, it's not that you have to make two weeks in advance uh, an appointment to see the professor for five minutes. We are there at your disposal uh, very often. We, we try to do uh, our best. The course schedules are also student friendly. That doesn't mean that you can sleep until 11 in the morning every day, but it means, for instance, if there is an internship, Possible, we will make sure that the courses are um, put together on a, on a limited number of days so that there is space for the internship and uh, so on. We think that we have a high, can offer you high qualitative uh, education. Our, I can say that our actuarial research group at Kai Leuven is, belongs to the top in the world according to different uh, criteria. We teach not only in Leuven, but we are also, my colleagues and me, we are also teaching, for instance, in Amsterdam, in Bologna, in Torino, in uh, Cotonou, in West Africa, uh, and so on. We have very close contacts with top universities, the University of Melbourne, the University of Tsinghua and Hong Kong University. These are all top universities with whom we collaborate doing um, research. Uh, so our, I would say our education is practical, practice oriented, but with a big foundation in, in uh, the theoretical developments that are uh, going on. We are internationally oriented. We advise our students uh, to go outside the walls of Leuven, let's say. Well, this is not international that our students have to go to Brussels or to Louvain-la-Neuve for 10 uh, for two courses, let's say, but at least it's already an effort that we built in the program so that students really also have contact with other students in other universities. By the way, UCL and ULB, these two universities are not far from Leuven, are like 20 or 30 kilometers away from Leuven. But real international is that the first semester of the second year can be followed at any of our partner institutions. And for the moment, if I'm right, some of our students are uh, following this semester in Geneva, in Taiwan, in uh, the University of uh, Torino, and uh, so on. So take this opportunity, we, we offer you this uh, opportunity to go real international. There is also um, 
career corner and job fairs. We organize a job fair so that students get into contact with uh, practice, with the companies that want to hire you, that are looking forward to have you as an actuary in their uh, company. We also have a strong alumni and friends organization, which is especially uh, an alumni and friends organization for the actuarial uh, students. And then we collaborate with many companies. Just to give a few names, KBC, AH Insurance, AHIAS, these are all uh, big insurance companies or, or big financial institutions in Belgium. I can even say that the CEOs or the CROs of these com companies very often are uh, former students of this, of our Master of Actuarial and Financial Engineering in his previous, in its previous uh, forms. So there are many reasons to come to Leuven in that sense. Something about the admission requirements for the Master of Financial and Actuarial Engineering. I will restrict here to students with the diploma obtained at a non-Flemish institution. If you are a student who follow today and uh, it's about, and if you have a, a diploma obtained in a Flemish institution, there are somewhat similar, but uh, if there is someone like that here in the session, just let us know. We, we can give you more information on that. In fact, the admission requirements, admission um, is an online application and you have to prove, in fact, three things. First of all, you have to show that you have the uh, suited prior academic knowledge in specific areas. So that means more or less that you have an academic degree a bet of a bachelor uh, level at least in economics, mathematics, statistics, engineering or physics. So um, you cannot come for, from whatever background we, we uh, recruit in, in a, from bachelors in a specific area. That's the first and the most important one. The second one is you also have to prove that your English, that you manage English in a sufficient level, at a sufficient level, so that you can follow our English program. And there are different ways how to prove this, which a TOEFL test and all these things. And then there are additional requirements. You have to show us a, a score, a, a satisfactory score of a GMAT or GRE test. What is this? In fact, this is uh, in such a test, your ability to analyze written material, to think um, critically and to solve problems and so on is tested. Now for condition two and three, there are some um, exemptions and these exemptions are explained on the next slide. If basically it means you have exemption for from the English language proficiency, if you have studied before in uh, an English uh, um, environment, let's say it like that. There is also an exemption for the additional requirement, the GMAT and so on. If you have studied before, if you have an academic degree from a list of uh, universities, just uh, have a look at this. Important to mention is that the admission is ultimately at the discretion of the faculty. That doesn't mean that we will uh, try to exclude you in one way or another, but we look really at the case by case uh, situation uh, to see if your profile suits in uh, following uh, our master. It's just to avoid that people afterwards are disappointed that they think that, that they have uh, chosen a wrong master. So your, your background should be sufficient and should be um, suited for the program, let's say. Okay. Something about the career uh, perspectives for the Master of Actuarial and Financial Engineering. I would say that so far as I know that I don't know any of our students who doesn't find a job. There is a lot of demand in the financial and the insurance industry for people with such a master diploma. So the careers that you will, um, the work that you will do, you, you should look for careers in financial institutions and governmental institutions which involve analytics and quantitative risk. So wherever in a financial institution where mathematics and statistics is involved, that's the place where you will work. Will work. And it is insurance companies, banks, pension funds, consultancy agencies, and so on. Very often what we see is that students 
who come from who have followed our master start in such a career in uh, which involves analytics and quantitative risk but very of often after a number of years a sufficient number of years they evolve to more management functions like i said several of several of our previous students are now ceo or cro of important financial uh, companies or, or insurance companies um, in belgium and outside belgium okay um, you can i mentioned this already but i will uh, point it again you can become an actuary in fact what is an actuary an actuary is someone who applies mathematics and statistics in an insurance and financial context you can become officially an actuary by becoming member of the professional association of actuaries in belgium we have the institute of actuaries of belgium and if you are a member of that via this you can become member of the international actuarial association let's say that our program if you follow the right electives uh, satisfies 90 or 95 percent of the requirements of these professional actuarial associations so you're almost there after having followed our program it's very important i uh, you don't have to become a member of such an association but i think it's important it, it uh, gives a big value on um, you as a person for hiring in the company companies are, are very often looking looking for actuaries what kind of job that you will do i was saying very broadly analytics and quantitative uh, risk that's what you are uh, will be busy with but that means that you will be more in more detail you will work on product development new products setting in the market price how should you price this pro pro uh, products employee benefits calculations so what pensions can an employer give to his employees and how much should they pay for that and so on solvency calculations reserving capital so how um, what are the regulations concerning the amount of capital let's say that companies have to set aside to be able to pay their clients their, their customers that's all the kind of quantitative job that you will perform here we talked about uh, our ambassadors and uh, we are happy that our ambassador uh, is also here attending uh, the session you can attend the ambassador you can read his testimonial that's one thing but there is more important you can even chat with them you can send them a mail with any practical question related to uh, the study or relating with studying uh, in Leuven so thanks to our ambassador for being here tonight more practical information and contact details are then mentioned here I think by now you know the prospective students website you know the here you can find our ambassadors there is the overview brochure which probably you have read already uh, feel free to email us if you have additional questions if you have questions to the professors uh, our email is not here but may I, I don't know what's the best way but via maybe um, via the ambassador or via the admissions uh, you can direct you can ask a question to any of the professors teaching in the program and we will answer you it will be our pleasure to answer you 